or we've got a really special thing for you today. Nakamichi is a Japanese company which is especially known for its excellent and very expensive tape decks. Perhaps the most famous of them all is the Dragon on the 1000ZXL, but these are not what I've got here today. Why do you bring that up then you ask? Well, because what I've got here today is also Nakamichi, it's also called Dragon, it's also top of the line, but it's a turntable. Nakamichi had released about a billion different cassette decks during their lifetime, but only two turntables. Their first turntable was named TX-1000. With its dimensions, it was an absolute monster. It was 27 inches long and weighed it almost 90 pounds. It wasn't exactly cheap to say the least. In 1982 it cost 1.1 million yen, which was about 7,000 pounds. It was bloody expensive and not even audiophiles were buying the player, so it's pretty much impossible to see one of these in the wild. Nakamichi wanted something more affordable, so they came out with the Dragon CT in 1983, and even though it was a lot cheaper, it wasn't cheap by any measures, it cost about 1500 quid. The difference between those two is quite apparent at first sight. While the TX-1000 was designed by Etsuro Nakamichi himself and built by Micro Seiki, the Dragon was designed by Junichi Okumura and built by Fujiya Audio. The Dragon lost a lot of weight compared to the TX-1000, it's got a lot smaller and it's got a lot simpler. Nakamichi got rid of some fancy features like backlit buttons or this kind of sick display. However, I fancy simple things, so the Dragon is a bit more appealing to me. Moreover, I've never seen the TX-1000 with me on eyes, I'm judging by the images I found on the net. When I first saw the Dragon brochure, I didn't fancy much, but I have to say, it looks much better in person. It's actually very pretty, and it certainly looks a lot better than today's crap turntables like Project. It's a classic direct drive 2-speed turntable, 33 and 45 RPM. With all the accessories it weighs about 44 pounds, which is about 20 kilos. Even though it may seem quite heavy, compared to the TX-1000 monster which weighs about twice as much, it's not. But since the TX-1000 was made of metal, while the Dragon was made of wood, it's quite understandable. The platter weighs 4.5 pounds, which is about 2 kilos. The rest is chassis and electronics. The turntable is quite difficult to set up. Just a tiny bit of a mistake, and it's skipping like crazy. I've never had such a problem with setting up a turntable before. There are a couple of features to help you set up the turntable for the maximum performance though. First is this oil reservoir which makes the arm movement as smooth as possible. At least in theory, I'm not sure if it actually helps with anything, but it should. Then of course we need to set up this counterweight and entice kit in according to the cartridge menu. For this test I'm using Yamaha MC11. Its tracking force is rated between 1.5 and 2.1 grams. It's got one unique and cracking feature up on its sleeve you can use before you drop the needle down on the record. But first, let me get back to the Dragon cassette deck one more time. Nakamichi always implemented some crazy shite in their products, but it was always state of the art and sometimes a bit over engineered. The Dragon was really special in so many ways, but it's got one really interesting and unique feature. Every time you play a cassette, the deck calibrates the set for an optimal performance. It was called Nakamichi Automatic Azimuth Correction. Nakamichi had implemented something similar to this turntable. They named it Absolute Center Search System. Some vinyl records may have some minor or major imperfections like off-center all or they all may be oversized, which makes the record rotate off-center. The Absolute Center Search System does exactly what it says it does. It searches for an absolute center of the record. It does thereby measuring the groove eccentricity of the record with this second arm and then makes necessary corrections and adjustments to position entire player with this little thing here. Does it actually work? Well, this is how the cantilever wiggles before the adjustment. And this is after. Nakamichi claims that thanks to the system the wow and flutter will be virtually non-existent and that it can then read 100% of the information from the groove. It's quite a bold claim. I found one problem with the system though. It doesn't fancy transparent records at all. But as it usually is, transparent records are always source of problems. The absolute center search system was first implemented in the TX-1000, so the Dragon is not the first device with this feature. 
Now Commit wanted to make the TX1000 perfect, so they not only implemented the center search system, but also bought an Audio Technica 8666, fitted the thing to the TS1000 or named it VS100. It's essentially another stabilizer that uses vacuum to alter record on the player together. Measuring the center takes some time, depending on how much the record is off of course. This can take up to one minute. If you reckon this long, put the bloody VS100 on and you'll wait for another 10 minutes before you can start the playback. You should better get two systems and switch between them, listening to one while the other is stabilizing the record. On TVR, how does it actually sound? They say it sounds better than the TX1000, but since it's pretty much impossible to get the TX1000, I can't test it. Even though the Dragon sounds excellent, or if to be perfectly honest with you, or if I may have my GT2000 better sounding, even after the center search. It apparently doesn't need these kind of fancy features to get the best out of the record. Or we've made a couple of direct recordings, so you'd have some idea how it actually sounds with the Yamaha MC11 card. As I said, it really sounds great, but not perfect. This cartridge can do a bit more. Of course, the most important part of the entire chain is properly pressed record and properly chosen card. On since playing the record is all about vibrations, the turntable needs proper suspension, firm and easily turning arm to reduce unwanted vibrations. The Dragon is a really special kind of turntable. In 1983, it was state of the art, it's got very nice features, it looks good, the sound output is excellent, but it's bloody expensive. If you can find one of these on eBay, it can cost about six or seven thousand pounds, or I don't reckon it's really worth it. You can find better looking and overall better turntables for much less. It's expensive just because of the name and the rarity of the turntable. The main arm is solid, rigid and very stable. Someone may be put off by their shell, which is not removable, but it should be more stable the way it is. The suspension works quite well actually, I tried to simulate a little earthquake and it was holding perfectly. It's a brilliant turntable and the absolute center search makes it unique. I'm not aware of another turntable with a similar feature. I absolutely love putting the record on the platter, watching the second arm measuring the absolute center, dropping the arm on a record or listening to the crackling sound of a dirty groove. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today, I'll catch you later.